So now I have my racks here in Autodesk 3ds Max. Now we're gonna send this in the, into Create and we're going to start uh, assembling the racks with the, uh, with the palette variants and everything on them. So um, again, to do that, I'm just going to uh, say Omniverse, export all, do it from the menu drop down this time. Again, default prim is world, uh, Z up, and I wanna send materials and I'm gonna call this rack single and export it. And you can see it's pretty quick. It's right here in, um, in create. So I'm gonna open that up though. Because the first thing I want to do is I need to add some physics to it. So I'm going to select it, right click, add physics, rigid body with collider. Uh, and But you see right now it's just basically just a big bounding box over the thing. So we can't really put any pallets in here because uh, they're going to be intersecting with the, uh, with the physics cage. So... It's a pretty easy fix here. I'm in, down here in, in the properties under Collider. I'm going to um, change convex hull to convex decomposition. And then I'm going to uh, go under the advanced drop down here and do shrink wrapped. So I'm going to go file new. I didn't save that in its state. Uh, and I'm going to start adding these as references. So I'm going to take my rack single. I'm just going to drop it into my stage panel here. I'll split out my layers. And I have my rack, that's awesome. I don't want the default light. Well, maybe I'll keep it on. I'm gonna to need to delete it a little later. Um, come into my palette variants and I have my palette variants materials in here. And I'm just gonna start dropping those in as references as well. Great. And then I'm just gonna start shuffling them around. So I'll take one palette, maybe put it there, take another palette, put it up here, and I'll take this palette and put it there. Maybe line it up a little bit. And again, these are variants, so um, you can feel free to, uh, to change those up here by selecting the variant type that you want. That's not good. B or C. All right, and these already have physics applied. So let's go ahead and add a ground plane and see what uh, see what we got going on here. Possible we'll get some explosions. Yeah. So it looks like this bottom one here needs to be adjusted. And there is currently a bug that we're working through um, where if you run physics, see how it does that weird thing? So you might encounter that. Uh, the fix is to reopen the stage. Okay. I just want to adjust these a little bit. All right, so now I've gone through and I've just uh, randomized the palettes a little bit. Uh, he says as he doesn't have a random palette here. So let me uh, just change that. So I'm just going to select underneath the, uh, the reference here. I'm going to select the variance primitive. And I'm just going to change that to uh, something different. So we get some good randomization in there and then maybe I'll just slide that guy over just a tad okay and they settle a little bit but that's fine and uh, I've done that on all the palettes so yeah feel free to configure the palette change variants to your liking and then when you have them just uh, pressing the space bar running physics simulation will be able to give you a little uh test to see if sometimes if it's too um if there's too much collision boxes will fall down or whatever and you don't want that to happen but then you can do like little fun tests you know like uh just holding shift and dragging and good okay and that'll be really fun when we get 
we get multiple um, racks in there and they can start colliding into each other like dominoes. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start assembling these in the... Oh, no, I need to do one thing first. So let's get rid of the ground plane here. Uh, I'm going to save this file. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to add my racks palettes as a reference into this file. And I'm going to get rid of the default light because, again, we don't want that to propagate up the stack as we start assembling these pieces inside of our main stage. So now that I have that, I'm just going to save it as Rack Master. Okay, now that I have Rack Master, um, we're going to start assembling the warehouse and dropping these in. So we'll do that next. So now I'm going to create a new stage. I'm going to uh, come over here to my warehouse under assets and uh, grab warehouse shell. And I'm going to drop that into this stage as a new layer. Okay, so there it is. Let me zoom in here real fast. Okay. And then I'm going to grab... Rack master. I'm going to drop that in as a layer. Okay. And you'll notice that it is outside of the warehouse currently. And I want to move that inside the warehouse. Um, but since the rack master can be uh, coordinated into the, um, into the warehouse, uh, what I want to do is I want to, I want to make that the authoring layer. And this way, any changes now that I make to, well, anything will be stored in Rack Master. But in this case, I'm just going to be grabbing uh, racks and pallets and bringing them in. So I'll just grab the little gizmo guy, press F to focus in. Whoops. And there we are. And I'll just start placing them. It's good. Press Control D. Slide that over. Okay, that's good. Grab both of those guys. Control D. Slide it back. Actually, no. Let me not do that. Uh, I'm going to make some changes to this one because what I would like is, you know, I don't want all of these racks to look the same. So I'm going to start um, just swapping variants on these. Uh, by the way, you press up and you'll go to the, to the top level node of whatever it is that you're, uh, you're on. So if I select this box, I press up it's going to take it to the palette group and then the variance and then the reference just by pressing the up arrow. So I'll just start swapping these around. I want them to be different than what is there. So I also might uh, just grab the reference and turn on my snaps here. And if I hold it down and I go to snap settings, this is where your snaps are and I have a 15 degree rotation. So that's great. And I'll just spin that on the 90. Oh, turn snaps off to move it. Just something to differentiate, you know, so you don't, the repetition isn't obvious. And I'll go through and do this for, um, for this whole rack.
Okay, so these look um, different enough, I suppose. And again, all these changes I'm making are being captured inside of the actual uh, file because I have its authoring layer as my active layer. So I'll click the blue save icon in my layer tab to save that. And then I'm going to uh, save this file as worlds. And this is going to be a world, whoops, world demo pack. So if I just drag over another virtual machine that I have running here, you can see um, I have Rack Master open and um, and I have those two palettes. Even though I haven't been editing this file, um, I've just been editing it with the active layer here. And so I can even turn on Live Sync on that layer and turn on uh, Live Sync here. And you'll see when I grab, no, it's, uh, we're in squish mode here, but um, if I grab these guys, control D, and then I move them out, you can see the racks are created in this file automatically. So that's neat. And maybe what I'll do for these is I will um, turn on my snaps and I'll just rotate these 180. So they look a little bit different than the other one. That, that's not gonna work. That's a, that's a safety hazard. So safety hazards happen though, especially when the, this whole warehouse is gonna be collapsed anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just slide that guy in a little bit. Oh, and one thing I forgot to test here is uh, the physics. So I'm going to uh, just make my root layer, my authoring layer, disable live sync because we don't need that. I just wanted to show you the example of that working. And I'm gonna press play and see if we get, how much bounce we get out of these things. Okay, so it's good, no box spillage. And of course we can test it. I just, again, shift grab. And bang, let me throw that around, throw that around. And we can grab a box. Okay, cool, so that's working great. So now I'm just gonna keep on Duplicating these, I'll duplicate these down the line. I'll uh, probably change some variants. And so now I have all of my racks, which is great. I have variants applied on them. I can go through and you know, change different variants on these things if I want to make a little more randomization, maybe rotate them, rotate them around 180 degrees, whatever, just play with that. But let's see, um, let's see what we really want to see after we save everything. And just a side note here, you can save individual layers or you can save uh, the root layer, or you can save the whole thing, which is that top level save there. And that'll save all layers that have been changed. So you should be careful with that. Because if you have a, if you have a layer that's changed and you didn't want to change it, that's generally a bad thing. Okay. I'm going to press play again. Okay. So it looks like it finished, uh, compiling and now physics is running. So all of this should be very dynamic. So I can just grab that one, crash that guy, and then grab that guy, and crash that guy. And we have the beginnings of our falling warehouse stage, which is fun. We'll add some colliders here a little later. We'll add, uh, oh, looks like we 
Had a little issue here. Oh, ah, nope. Okay, give it a little help. Awesome. Okay, great. So that's what we're looking for. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, add our lights into this environment. And, um, and then we'll start building out the environment uh, with lighting and fog and play with lights and things like that. All right. See you there.